Um, cool. So I've got Cecilia here. So thank you so much for taking the time to, to have a chat with us and give us your insights, but feel free to just, you know, introduce yourself and give us a bit of an understanding of who you are and what it is that you do. Um, so I'm Cecilia, I run an architecture practice. Um, when I say run, it's essentially me running it with freelancers that I work with. I do domestic uh, projects mainly. Um, I started about a year and a half ago and it literally started because I returned to work from having my second child and I got a job and I thought, right, I'm going to do this because going back to work isn't where I want to be uh, and I want to run my own practice. So it was kind of a necessary thing, but it came a little bit suddenly, although I knew I was always going to do it. Um, so here's me. I've been doing this for a year and a half now. Nice. Um, take me through, I, I can't remember exactly how long you've been in the program. I think it'd be like a hand, like a, a few months, but feel free to, to just give us like an understanding of where your business at, was at and why you felt like um, coming into the program was a good fit. Yeah, so it's been about two and a half months I've been in the programme. It was basically two days before Christmas that I joined. Um, and uh, the reason why I joined and the reason why I you know, came into the programme was um, the way that I started, it was kind of a start, but it is by no means where I want to be. And there are, and I appreciate that there's lots of things I need to do to get to the right clientele. Um, and doing the work, running a business improving your reach and communicating your worth and your value all of those things are just a lot to do on your own when you haven't got guidance and I am very aware that I like to work efficiently but to research all of those things by myself is really not that time efficient for me uh, and how can I get results quickly well if I'm doing everything on my own and learning in my own time and not learning from other people's experiences and knowledge then that's also that's kind of the opposite of what I want to do I want to work efficiently and I want to get results and just the drag of getting too many wrong clients uh, people not understanding your worth probably because I'm not explaining my worth so I'm not getting the right clients and that drag is really grinding um, and I've seen it on lots of people you know where they lose their motivation and I'm I just don't want to do that I don't want to get to a point where it's like I can't do this anymore so it, it, it was kind of getting to a point where I, I don't like this I can't I need almost like an emergency involvement um, so that I can enjoy this and get to where I want to be sooner before it wears me down got it um yeah the so in regards to to being inside the training program um like what what topics of conversation and what subject matters do we cover that you feel like you're gravitating most towards the content so like what kind of content do you find you enjoying the most um in the program and and really like what what facets from like how the program is structured do you do you gravitate towards the most as well well I think all of the topics I really enjoy. So as a starting point, even though I haven't got through all of them, but um, I think I like really like the idea that you can be quite direct in how you sort of structure your day and that you need to, one of the things in the first module was about your mind and your focus. Um, you know, those are things that have been really in wanting to do, but you've been quite direct in how you've kind of communicated that. So, you know, get enough sleep. If you're not sleeping enough, then you're not, you know, performing. If you're not um, at your optimal thing, then how can you focus? If you're being distracted, you know, there's a lot of really, a lot of things that make a lot of sense, but that are very directly said, you know, so there's, it, some, it takes some of it, what in general, how the program is structured. I like that it's somehow taking away some elements of stuff that I need to figure out myself it's just kind of given because and that doesn't mean that there isn't there is lots of exploration and stuff so it gives lots of space for that because you've got to work stuff out for yourself but some things aren't like read this book and, and work out what your thing is you know some things are just kind of you give the structure and then you can operate within it so I'm I have a loose um, day planner, for example, from before, but I'm really looking forward to actually getting to that bit and just like feeling confident that I'm balancing everything and um, operating in an optimal way. So I, I like that um, communicating right and just being optimized. 
Nice. What, yeah. um, take me through some of the, like the biggest aha moment that maybe you've had since being inside the program. And if you, if you feel like a couple come to mind, feel free to, to share them. Um, so I've mostly got through module one and a little bit of two, and that's, and it's actually a really big topic, especially depending on how much you sort of delve into it. And one of the things that I realized is whilst I'm quite a high performer, there are things that are holding me back that have been the big struggles and being able to pinpoint them. And some of them are in my mindset. And so, you know, previously I've been struggling, like get enough social po media posts out and do all of those things. But actually there were barriers in my mind related to those and how I felt about my work and what I was doing about it. And even like how I was communicating to people and my prices, they are still lower than I feel they should be, but they have gone up and I'm communicating about them differently. And I'm learning to communicate in a way that targets their customers needs. So really, what is your need? and and I talk to them just about how my work delivers that. So that is how I talk about my service has definitely improved. I was aware I needed to do those things, but I've been given tools to further improve the way I communicate. And I have, I mean, it's always a learning curve, but I'm now earning my project. I upped my project in December. So I'm currently, you know, getting higher fees than I was even before I joined the the program yeah nice i mean yeah. wait until you actually get to the offer stuff <laughs> but um i mean and I, I think we've had obviously had a, a couple of conversations on the group calls which which i think we've we've covered kind of you know where where some of the changes have come from but you've obviously got way more to learn about that which is going to be exciting yes. but yeah, yeah like people underestimate the the fact that we are a we are the vehicle of our business and we have outputs and efficiencies and yeah. like everything goes into the more focus we can have to problem solve and make smart decisions. Well, that's all the business trajectory is based off is just good decision-making and yeah. solving problems that are <laughs> always going to arise, I suppose. So yeah, take me through, like you were kind of just um, shedding some light on it, but like the, like the results from the shifts in thinking and, and what you've implemented so far. So you've been able to like increase your, like your project fees. Does that mean that you're, you're working more or does that just mean that you're <clears throat> basically more able to better package what you're already doing and have been doing just at a better number? So I think there's um, the two things that have in, so I've got higher project value based on the fact that I am communicating that I can give transformations and I can change your life. I can solve your problems. Whereas before I was selling architectural services, whereas now I'm like, you know, and I, and it wasn't that I was necessarily doing it wrong because I was still getting to it all right myself. But, you know, I, like you say, I haven't even got to the offer bit. This is just from doing the mind section that I've had some improvements and I haven't even got to the offer. Um, and I'm just changing the way I communicate. Um, the other thing is this um so what was your question yeah just like the kind of based on your experience and the thinking and the strategies that you've been through like like this what the kind of results and impacts that you've seen on the business yeah. um i'd i'd so on the business that on myself i think i realized that i'm a doer and if I hadn't have done the mind, I would have just continued doing and struggling with the hurdles that I struggle with in my mind. So at the moment, I'm working on the engine. And this is kind of like the long game. I've got to work on the engine, get those barriers. Like it's, it's almost like, you know, you've got a bike, you've got a stick in the wheel and you can keep riding with that stick in the wheel. And it's going to be a struggle. Just sort that out. And then the rest of it is fine. I'm a doer. I love doing. I love all of these strategies and technical things that I'm um you know ways of doing this and I can't wait to get to them but I'm realizing that my mind is my barrier uh, I don't sleep enough I don't prioritize myself and I don't rest my strategy even though I don't like it is has been to work loads 
Mm. Um, and I don't agree with that. I, I am completely aware that that isn't how you do it. You work smart. You optimize yourself. You do the right jobs. You do the high value tasks. You don't just work all hours of the day. And that is yeah. my natural thing to do. And it makes no sense. And do going through the things in my mind are like really challenging me that I've got to deal with. Why do I do that? Why do I, you know, so it's, it's a huge topic and it's really necessary. I wish I could zoom through it, but I'm feeling as though I've got to that book, uh, Cyber Psycho Cybernetics. Yeah, it's like and going through that and the exercises, you know, I'd never. And already I was talking to someone else, my friend of mine, uh, my friend's husband is a psychotherapist. And already he's like, you're talking as if you're familiar with these topics. Whereas, you know, two and a half months ago, I really was not familiar. I knew some things about myself, but people are already saying to me when I'm explaining what's going on in my brain and what, you know, how I'm working there, there, there is a change in me and my awareness of myself, um, and my awareness of things that are barriers, which I think is really smart. You need to you need to know those things, otherwise you're kind of blindly peddling um, and not going anywhere, or it's just harder. Yeah, the I, I think the peddling analogy is the best. I, the way that I the way that I think about it, and, and like like I say in the first module, like I feel like if you can get the first module right, you don't need the yeah. strategies because. Yeah then you've got the energy and the focus to just deal with any problem. You'd eventually yeah. figure yeah. out everything I'm going to take you through in the rest of the program. But most people like, like business and life, I feel like is like a 10,000 mile race where everybody frantically runs towards the finish line. And if you just stop and build a bike, which yeah. takes you a few days to do, and it feels yeah. the FOMO of watching other people busy, busy, busy is really yeah. hard to deal with, but, but then you're building a, a machine that allows you to move at three times the speed with a third of the yeah. effort. Yeah, most I people love aren't, that analogy. Most it's people great. aren't prepared to stop. And yeah. um, it's challenging yeah, because stop. I don't like oh, the it's massively. It's challenging because you want to go, <laughs> but it's yeah. it, I really see the value on it. And you know, going through those exercises like the objective sheet, um, I have affirmations and be, and wrong beliefs that if I turn them on the head, become positive beliefs and um, principles. And I'm questioning why do I believe these things? You know, where did it come from? Why? Where did it exist from? You know, like why do I think there's a ceiling to my success? Why do I not? Uh, why do I take that sort of attitude from a client? I should just drop that client because it's not worth it. But why do I somehow feel like that's my level? It's not. Yeah. Um, so and, you know, unless I just sort of say, well, you're not the right client for me. Good luck. Then I can I'd rather spend my time learning about how to communicate my value than to take on a bad client. I'd rather lose that money in the long run. It's not that bad client isn't worth it. They're not for me. And um, mm. so it's it's really about invest, knowing that you've got to invest in yourself and how you communicate and just everything about this vehicle that I am um and the service i'm providing yeah so really enjoying it it's it's a it's more than business <laughs> yeah oh yeah it i mean yeah it, it it is more than business but you're about to then jump into the next module which is pure that's yeah. all it is for the rest yeah. so that's, that's yeah and i can't wait i'm super excited i wish i was there already but the one thing yeah. I, I'm, I'm just being diligent yeah. and doing the steps as they come so that i'm not half doing it and not resolving some of the things although everything is work in progress so nothing's ever going to be perfect and you've well, got to try thing. it but it's you know, a, yeah it's like a i mean as much as we want to get immediate impact which it seems like it is having in areas like i, I care more about where you're at in 10 years knowing this stuff and and applying these kind of things you know um so yeah um fantastic thank you so much Cecilia, for taking the time to just right. voice some some thoughts and takeaways and um yeah we'll, we'll chat again soon but thanks for your time yeah yeah no worries